What's up drivers? Today I have a lovely little MG SUV for you to have a look at. Now today on test I actually have this MG ZS which is on the 24 plate so it's a brand new model. It comes with a one litre petrol engine uh, mated to an automatic gearbox. So let's get into it today. First we're going to talk about of course the exterior design of the vehicle and what makes this ZS stand out of the other competitors in this class. Now this is of course a small SUV. Hey buddy. Lovely cats love them, the wax clearly on the alloys. Um, this is a small SUV and what you get with it, well the exterior design I think is pretty nice. It's a very handsome looking car if you look at the angles on it. Um, it kind of looks, reminds me of the, the, second, genera uh, the second generation cash guy a little bit. Um, uh, it's very, very similar design to what the Nissan Qashqai is from the 12 and 13 plate models, I would think. Uh, first things first, let's talk about the front. You do have access to, well, daylight running lamps, which is fantastic. And these headlights are beautifully created. They are wraparound headlights. They have the integrated daylight, daylight headlamps in there. And you can see it's SAIC light technology. If you come over here, you'll see that it says SAIC on it. Can, I wonder if you can see that. But SAIC is, of course, a Chinese car company. This is, as we all know, because we're in England, Morris Garages or MG, but it's actually not MG. It's, um, as I said, SAIC, which is a Chinese car company, which have owned uh, MG and Rover now. And um, they actually have released this vehicle under the MG brand. First things first, which completely catches your eye, is this massive grille. And I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. But the front of the car mix gives it a good presence. It does give it, well, I wouldn't say some some personality, but it, what the, what it does do is make the car have some sort of road presence. Now the grill itself is if you if you have the opportunity to ever feel them, they feel quite flimsy to be honest, and you can see that it's flexing under my pressure, um, and the fact that it's kind of this really gloss plastic and it's surrounded by what looks like chrome but again it's not chrome it's plastic this theme is then carried out at the bottom with the bottom grille as well with a slightly different design which i think does help give this car a little bit of a different look and of course you can have different kind of tech in it and at the bottom you have uh, the chrome looking cladding again which is actually just plastic all in all the front of this car well, the, it looks it's pretty good looking actually if i'm honest um and in this electric blue color i think it really does stand out what you do get in, tech wise is of course uh front fog lights which are integrated into the front bumper just do keep in mind that the front bumper and the surrounds of the fogs are also black similar to the grill um on the bottom and the middle which again helps with that contrast all in all i think if you had this vehicle on your drive you wouldn't feel embarrassed about it. I think it's a very, very handsome thing. Another thing we would like to discuss are these alloys. There are 17 inch alloys. You can get bigger ones, but I think these are the ones to have because of the tire profile, you will have more comfort on them. They are diamond. Well, they look like they're diamond cut, but they, I, I suppose they are. And they kind of remind me of Vauxhall wheels, similar to my Astro down there. You can see that one, but these wheels are brand new, of course. And, they feel good and they again are black with the actual diamond cup being being exposed. The side of the car, the side profile of the car is, well, what's the word I'm looking for? At least extensive actually, I would say. Um, the car has lovely lines and I mean wonderful lines. Look at the, look, this massive crease here highlights why MG is invested so much in in design these days the only thing that we i will say is that apart from the the actual design the, the thing that lets it down is this cladding which you can see which is designed to make this car look really butch um it is an suv but it doesn't really have four wheel drive so it's one of those lifestyle vehicles you can see the cladding here as well on the bottom it's very useful and it's useful because of the simple fact that when you get out of the car which we'll discuss later you won't get gunk on the back of your legs because the cladding covers the inside bit the only thing that kind of lifts this side profile is this chrome strip here, which I think does look lovely, but again, if you feel it, it's plastic. Um, having said that, the lines and so on and the contours that the car has, especially this bulge here, makes it look really nice and quite bulky, really. And it is a baby SUV at the end of the day. So keeping that in mind, I think it's the side profile design is lovely, and this car is genuinely 
if it was on your job, you'd be quite proud of it. Coming back here, I mean, this is the best view of this vehicle. So we have got lovely tail lamps. We have what, unfortunately, something I'm not happy about are fake exhausts. These aren't exhausts. They, they look like exhausts, but they're not. The exhaust is actually one exhaust which is underneath. Um, so the the way this works is uh, well, apart from the fake exhaust, I think the rear of this car is really quite lovely. I think the sensors are integrated at different levels, so you can actually park this car worrying not worrying about if you're going to hit anything again you like the front fog lights you have the rear color clusters as well with the fog lamps in them which are different colors which um, again add to the profile the very proud badging like mg zs all lovely um and these remind me of the sportage really the the rear clusters they remind me of a kia sportage and i must say they are really really nice um again the design of the light inside, the way it is, and the crystals used and everything like that, very beautiful. All in all, I say, and if you do it, if you look at the rear end of the vehicle, I would definitely say it is a pretty car. Now, we're going to go inside and check out the interior of the MG ZS to see what features it has, and then we'll take it out for a drive to see if it's worth for you to have. Now, all MGs, well, all of them come with keyless entry, but in this case, we have you would think you have proximity keys, but they don't. I have the key in my pocket, it doesn't work. What you do have instead is this button here, which you press, and you can see it unlocks the car. And let's have a look inside. So this is the interior of the MG. The door card, the steering, and the general interior of the vehicle. First thing that strikes you is this lovely red stitching, which is on every single panel, including the side of the dash on the seats it's quite it's quite lovely to see and you can see this red stitching of mg and of course all mg was really known for was to be a sporty brand morris garages took austin cars and they made them well good um and uh, sporty and fun to have um hence why <coughs> i think this is the same thing that mg is trying to you know um build on the heritage of the vehicle now let's go inside and have a look okay so we're going to jump into the mg now and see what the interior is like first things i would say it's actually a very very nice place to be i am genuinely and i mean genuinely gobsmacked at how nice this interior looks now Keeping in mind that we all have reservation when it comes to Chinese cars, but there are fair amounts in the market now, especially BYD is, is doing wonders at the minute and their cars are very well received. Having said that, um, this is a lovely place to be. There's leather everywhere. Um, you have, again, a very sporty driving position. You're sitting quite high up, so you have excellent visibility all around you. The seats are very well supported, including shoulder room. You, I've got decent lumbar support. My um, tyres are well supported, so under seat support is very good. These bolsters on this side, these bolsters are very good and very well padded, so it kind of holds you in place quite nicely. I'm quite surprised of how nice it is. One thing I'm not a big fan of is this, which is fake carbon carbon fiber. This is this is a very Chinese situation. Um, you'll see um, a lot of people who do these kind of mods. Um, this is not real carbon fiber. It's designed to make it look nice, but I think it looks tacky. Uh, that's the only downside. You can see it's all over the dash as well. Having said that, the dash itself is, is soft touch. I mean, it's really good quality. You, all of this is soft touch and well stitched together. It seems like it's pretty well put together. Nothing is squeaking. Nothing is making any noise. Everything is very well put together. This, however, looks like an afterthought to me. The, the, this is an empty space and this is an insert that they've really put in which looks pretty useless i don't think that circumference is big enough for any realistic drink in the uk so i i think that is a a massive problem another thing which i don't understand is um they have something called auto braking and they have uh, electronic parking which is but they've given you both the options which is rather strange um also um one thing i have to say about this car it is genuinely does feel like a cash guy in here 
I mean, it's it very similar to a Nissan Qashqai, uh, especially the way that the steering wheel lay out the ergonomics of the vehicle itself. But I, I have to say, overall, I'm very impressed. The, the quality of this vehicle is quite high. Apart from these, um, the tacky uh, carbon fiber looks, everything you touch is soft touch. Uh, apart from these plas plastics on the doors, um, these are, well, um, hard plastic, so it's quite scratchy. But what can you expect? It's not a, a massively premium vehicle. <clears throat> Having said that, you do get a fair amount of kit for your money. What do you get? You have access to, well, automatic gearbox, as I said. You have a multimedia port there. Um, you also have a charging port there. You have uh, climate control, which is controllable through these piano keys, which is very, very posh, very nice. Start, stop button, start, stop on the vehicle itself. You get access to voice control, as you can see on the steering wheel, which is wonderful. Um, you have all the menus to be controlled here. Um, you can control your phone and everything like that. One thing I do think it is missing is cruise control, but I might be wrong here because it's, it's actually not missing. It's down here. Now, you would imagine it to be on the steering wheel with the rest of the buttons, like here or, or here, but it's actually down here. This is where your cruise control is. And although um, it's out of the way and kind of difficult to see unless you, if you're my height, you can see from this angle that it actually blocks it completely. Uh, but you, you can see from this angle that the cruise control is there and it is highlighting uh, effectively what needs to be done on how to control the cruise control of this car. Um, I believe it doesn't have adaptive cruise control, but it is there and it's useful and it's usable. Um, another thing I would like to talk about is the grips. Leather grips on this steering wheel, well, it's fantastic. The leather grips are really good. They help you feel like you're driving a much sporty vehicle. Um, the key itself is a keyless thing, so you don't necessarily have a keyhole to put into it. You can obviously put it on this panel here and then give the car a start after you press the brake. Look at that. Did you hear that? that the car just came on immediately. And it had a lovely little MG animation. So if I was to switch that off again, um, my sister who's helping me film this is going to start the car. Look at that. Very, very nice. Very, very posh. And look at this, the main feature of this interior. One thing you can pretty much tell from the start is this screen does suffer from fingerprints. As you can see, there are plenty of fingerprints on it. My sister is going to show you the, the key feature, which is the 360 camera. That's brilliant. I mean, oh, let me just put the volume down. At this price range, to have a 360 camera on a vehicle is pretty impressive. And you can also change it into 3D animation and then turns into a 3D animation of the ZS, which I think is rather cool. Um, and then you can actually see how the car is going to be, be placed, how it's going to be placed. You can put it into different positions to see how the car looks. I mean, this is this is like kind of like old school PlayStation, if you remember. It's, it's really cool. And I have to say that engine, even though it's a one liter engine, it's fairly quiet as it sits. Let's have a listen to it. You can barely hear the engine and that's lovely. This car has integrated Apple CarPlay as well, which my sister's just highlighted to me, which is brilliant. Um, so Apple CarPlay on its own uh, is brilliant and it does also have heated and cooled seats, which is brilliant as well. Um, coming back to practicality, the great thing is you do have access to all of your main buttons that you would need like front defroster, rear defroster, two hands, so you don't actually have to go into the infotainment system to utilize that. Having said that, it does have DAB radio installed, it also has navigation. Um, having, uh, but I will say this, they, these graphics look um, well out of place, they kind of remind me of old school Windows Phone. Um, but on the plus side, it does work, everything does work. It does take its time um it's not laggy but it's not the fastest thing in the world having said that um it is fairly responsive um, but as you can see if i go back into navigation now it just i have to accept that and it's loading in the maps now and if i move it you can see it's super laggy so realistically you, you wouldn't use this um, it's a mess um, and this is quite shameful to be honest because SAIC is so big they have access to better systems they should be doing this and they shouldn't really be sidelining MG like that but um, 
One thing I will say, obviously, for anyone who has a phone or a smartphone that is compatible, you have access to Apple CarPlay. I don't know if you have access to Android Auto. Uh, you do indeed. You have access to Android Auto as well, which is wonderful. Um, so um, also with this car, I think you can obviously use pictures and videos as well, which my sisters just highlight to me, if you plug into that multimedia port at the bottom. But this is, I think, that you can do. That was a way of switching the screen on and off. Um, you can switch, switch it off, obviously, when you're doing it. Um, what you, what I think is something that I should praise about this car is, is the digital cockpit. Like, the virtual cockpit is like similar to what you find in an Audi, but at this price point, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal, actually. And you can see that we have the digital tachometer on the right and then the speedo on the left, and everything is red. Which makes me think that this car is in sports mode. Um, so maybe we should go into the vehicle settings and see if we can figure out how to turn off sport mode in this car. Um, should we go into car? Ah, look at this. It, it has options for driver assist, blind spot detection, all this is lovely. Um, then comfort and convenience. Follow me home, find my car. The lights can stay on. That's pretty useful as a feature as well. So uh, I must say that this car does come with a lot of kit. And keeping the price range in mind, um, I think it definitely is worth it. And you can choose how you want the steering. Urban means it's super light now. Wow. This steering is super light now. Um, and if you put it into dynamic, it should, it has, it has made it heavier. So it's got sports steering. So, yeah, I mean, there are things that would make it feel more, you know, um, active. And you, if you don't like anything, you can turn it into um, just a mundane, whatever, whatever MG has highlighted in, in factory settings. Now, otherwise, we do also have access to a nice, useful cubby hole there. The glove box itself, if my sister opens it, is quite spacious, I would think, would you? Mm. Yeah, with, um, it's not bad so. Uh, the vents up here and everything like that. I like this. Reminds me of a Mercedes A-Class. Definitely a very good quality interior. Wouldn't you say so, Chris? Uh, it's okay. Um, you have access to your own vanity mirror as well, in case you want to look at your receding hairline. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's useful. It definitely is. Um, there are plenty of room in the back as well. Let's go, let's go give the rear a, a go. And right here in this corner, which is kind of out of the way and annoying, to be honest, is uh, your side mirror controls and your fuel filler cap button and your bonnet release, which is um, not brilliant. You also have your central locking here and your windows there. You can see the key is making noise right now. It's because we have the doors open and the key is still in the car. If you were to leave, close the door, walk away from it, it would actually make a lot of racket as well. Um, so that's something I, I, I'd... Yes, so if you want, my sister wants to close the car and the key's inside. And the key's inside. I'm not sure I understand. That's just who we going crazy. And I'm going to move away from the car and close it. That honk means that the key is still inside the car. So it just kind of reminds you, please take your key. That's a brilliant useful feature. I mean, re realizing that most of the people that would end up buying these cars rather than uh, would be actually the people who can afford them at the price range which would be elderly or somebody who buys on finance now let's get into the back of the vehicle the first thing you notice is the amount of space that you actually have available which is pretty impressive if i'm honest i mean um you can see here that I actually have a fair amount of leg room in front of me. And as well as that, I have a lot of knee room in it. Um, now, what my sister is highlighting here is, of course, two USB ports that are brilliant. If you have kids in the back, you know, you would need access to USB ports to fund their addictiveness to their iPads. It also has their ISOFIX points um, on the two rear seats, not one on the middle, which does mean that you can put in baby seats. And because of the amount of space you have back here, you can actually fit bulky ones in you can see that there are also adaptive headrests in here which means that you would be able to protect yourself uh, from whiplash in an event of an accident so keeping everything in mind and the amount of space you have back here it's pretty impressive considering that this is actually in all fairness a mini suv it is not 
the big one. Uh, they are the MG's range is quite diverse, I must say. But uh, this uh, well, baby SUV is actually very, very, very spacious for um for what it is. Having said that, I think uh, the leather upholstery is quite easy to clean. Um, and uh, if you press and hold um, that button, you should be able to actually open the rear boot. In this case, it didn't work with this car. I have no idea why. Um, so my sister's opened it manually for us. But you can see that we have a huge, well, pretty impressive sized uh, boot, actually. I don't know what it is on litres. But I will say this, um, the only thing that kind of makes you wonder is why the, on earth have they made the lips so big like there's a whole lot of lifting you have to do from where it is very useful deep space but again if you're carrying heavy items it's going to be a pain in the ass to take all that out and that is going to cause major issues for your back so perhaps if you are going to be carrying a lot of um, stuff this is something you should keep in mind it is a pretty usable space having said that uh, with the nice square hole and uh, the parcel shelf itself can also support a fair amount of weight on it which is well it's quite useful at the end of the day i do apologize for the fact that m the mic has decided to uh, not capture some of the audio uh, hence why i'm doing this in voiceover but hope um, i do remember what i did say then and um, this video is still relevant uh, one thing I will say about this space um, is that this uh, MG ZS is very, very spacious for what it is, which is a small SUV. And if space is definitely something that you're interested in, then this MG ZS does make sense. It is a very, very good looking car. I think for what it is and the price range it banks itself as is definitely right, um, worth it. So we're going to take um, this MG out for a drive. This is a one liter unit, which is providing you with 110 horsepower. Um, <coughs> and it looks like it has automatic um, park release, which is lovely. Um, I have to say it's uh, the one liter engine has a lot of, lot of power. It seems like it, it picks up really quite well. Uh, the rear camera could be of better quality, if I'm honest. Uh, having said that, it does do the job really well. The gearbox is fairly light. The engine has a nice burble to it, which is lovely. It's very, very comfortable. Um, the suspension is fairly soft. Yeah, definitely. I would say the gearbox is, is well suited to this car with the one litre unit. It does change well. It does is definitely a turbo unit, which is brilliant. Um, and I have to say the suspension does a good a good job of soaking everything up. Um, the steering, when you put it in urban mode, is a joy because it's super light. Uh, there is enough feedback from it, so you know where you're. And I've lost the audio again. I do apologize for this, guys. I will be purchasing a new mic kit and it should fix this problem. But what I was saying is you do feel where your wheels are. And uh, even if when the steering is in urban mode uh, and when you do put it in dynamic mode, it does get heavier and does give you a good feel of the road. Um, what I'm really impressed with is that actually one litre unit, which actually does produce 110 horsepower. Now, this is a turbocharged unit, so it does mean that even though the MG is an SUV, and uh, I would consider it to be fairly heavy, but it does actually shift pretty well down the road. Having said that, it's definitely not a unit that you would take for really, really, really long motorway drives, firstly because of the capacity of the engine. Um, secondly, because even with the turbo, the fuel economy is really not that brilliant. Um, one thing that this the car does claim to be is fairly economical. And if you do drive it with sensibly, that is, um, you know, not flooring all the time um, and you're not utilizing turbo for more power rather than just using its assistance to move the car along. It will return about what, 45, 50 to the gallon. But um, if you're a spirited driver, let's say, then obviously it will return in the low 30s because turbos do drink fuel. Having said that, it does shift along quite well. I mean, uh, on this road, I remember reaching up to 40 rather quickly. And one thing you do notice is the ride. Now, it's not too soft, but it's not too 
harsh either. It's just perfectly suited. And I think this is one thing this MG does quite well, is it a joy to drive. It's actually a surprisingly fun and nippy thing to move around in. The handling is really, really well, well balanced. And the fact is, when you do take corners, it doesn't pitch or roll. Now, the suspension itself um, is comfortable, I would say, while, rather than being soft. And it does actually you know allow you to feel the road a little bit more and it drives well fairly nice i would say the road holding is very very good and the one thing you do notice on this drive is the driving position and everything does actually work quite well even though you're sitting quite high up in the car the way they've designed the dash and uh, the the whole kind of view makes you think you're driving something a bit sporty um now this unit the automatic unit is a five speed unit um now what this means is that you do actually get uh, pretty good ratios all throughout. So if you do put your foot down, the power band um, does stay with the car and you do feel a surge of power throughout. I mean, if you put blindfold on me and I didn't know how turbos worked and the surge of power, I would feel like this would be as good as a traditional 1.6 or 1.8 unit. Surprisingly, one thing that does kind of captivate you about this MGZS is the fact that it actually feels quite darty. Now, the way that the the suspension setup is actually done, it's it's not neutral, but it's not um I think it's slightly biased towards the front, but you can it's it's kind of positive. Um and that might be similar to how maybe a um, an Astro SRI would drive or if you were to drive any normal hatchback similar to what a Golf or you know 308 from Peugeot it's it's very very confidence inspiring I would say uh, the MG does pick up well the one point or the one litre engine with um, the automatic gearbox is a good kind of marriage it's quite nippy uh, it handles bumps well and on this twitchy road that I'm driving and this is a very very bumpy road I have to say the brakes also did not disappoint. The brake pedal is progressive. It gives you a good feel throughout. So you at no point do you feel, okay, do I have brakes? Do I have fade? It's just very, very easy to drive. And having said that, this would be perfectly suited for those drivers who are perhaps not very um, spirited, but do enjoy a little bit of, you know, um, popping down the road or, maybe going down the B roads because surprisingly this little car handles really quite well. And one thing to keep in mind, even on this bumpy kind of road where the cars normally move a lot, um, I have to say the, the suspension did a phenomenal job of soaking up all the bumps. And never point uh, and at never any point did I feel the car it was not planted or was moving about. It has very, very good road holding. Might might be because it has decent tires on. But I have to say, overall, it does give you a, a good drive, a good fun drive. And, and it's definitely something that is a massive redeeming feature. I mean, you can look past the infotainment system and everything like that, considering what this is and how much it costs. Now, one thing I will say, this one litre unit uh, with this automatic gearbox is the one I would go for. Now, normally, you won't... One thing, what I'm actually highlighting here is that you can actually feel that the car is very planted and it does turn in the corners. When you're taking the corners, you can feel that the car wants to rotate around you. And that's a good sign. It shows that the chassis is neutral and it allows the, that the car to actually have a really good handling characteristics. Having said that, there is a bit of a bias to the front because it is a front wheel drive. Um, but as I said, um, if you were to drive anything like an SRI Astra or a Golf GTI or anything similar along those lines, you will also feel that kind of drive. Now, I would definitely say if you ever have the opportunity to take this car for a drive, do it. Because I can only say this enough times, but realistically, this is one of the best driving SUVs, full stop. I mean, you would expect this kind of drive from Mini Countryman or, you know, uh, one of the sporty SUVs. <coughs> I had, did have an opportunity to drive a Cayman um, uh, from Porsche recently. And um, the the SUV, uh, KN, sorry, not Cayman, um, the Porsche KN SUV. And um, I have to say this um, does a better job than that. Um, the Cayenne is, is a very well taught and lovely, lovely car to drive. But it is rather harsh on the suspension. 
Um, I think this has slightly more forgiving suspension, which then allows you to um, be comfortable while still enjoying a spirited drive. Overall, I would definitely say the MG ZS has taken me by surprise. I wasn't expecting much being a SIAC product um, because um, I have to be honest, I did have my reservations, especially after they relaunched one of the most sought after British brands that ever existed. Um, having said that, they have actually kept true to the personality of MG. Morris Garages used to make peppy, hot little um, cars that were ex Austin and ex British Leyland. And I think um, if you keep that in mind, and this MG SUV is very sporty to drive. It has good amount of kit in it. It's extremely comfortable, lovely to look at. And above all, I think for the price point that they sell it, it's definitely worth it.